So in these next three videos, we're going to be talking about something that just by watching this video you're using right now, the nervous system. The pictures on the screen and the sounds you hear being collected by your eyes and ears respectively, and they're all being interpreted by your brain. And if you're thinking to yourself, wow, that's really cool, which you probably are, that's your nervous system working too, just the part that governs thought and makes you who you are. So what is the nervous system and what does it do? Well, it's got a pretty big and a really important job. As we all go about our daily lives, things in our environment are constantly changing. The weather, the temperature outside, what we eat for dinner, but let's go ahead and use the weather as an example. Now let's say it's thunderstorming, lightning, maybe some rain, and if we, if we happen to get caught in this, we're going to be wet and uncomfortable. Now, if we waited a little bit and we're lucky enough that the sun comes out and it warms up and maybe we could get a little bit of a tan, this is just one example of how our environment can change very quickly. Our bodies, on the other hand, stay relatively constant within a pretty narrow range. So our blood pressure, blood pH, and lots of other parameters stay pretty constant, and they're held that way. But how does that work exactly? Because our heart, for example, which controls many of these things, doesn't have eyes. Well, it turns out that what controls this is the nervous system. The job of the nervous system is to take in the huge amount of information that's out there in the world about the environment and allow our bodies to respond to it in a way that keeps us safe, healthy, and happy. In other words, this allows the body to adapt to any situation in which it may find itself. So let's talk for a minute now about how the nervous system is organized. The main organ of the nervous system is the brain, and it sits right here at the top of the head. It's like the central control station for the body, with lots of signals coming in, and lots of signals going out. And although lots of things take place in the body without direct input from the brain, the brain monitors pretty much everything and acts as the high-level control to process incoming signals and integrate them to form a coordinated response. But the brain is not the only part of the nervous system. The signals that go in and the signals that go out have to be carried on something, and these some things are called nerves and almost all of the nerve fibers go in and out of the brain via the spinal cord, which runs inside the vertebrae, the bones that make up your spine. So we'll draw that in here in white. So this is the first way to divide the nervous system, by location. Where all of the nerves join and run together in the spinal cord and brain, we'll call that the central nervous system. So let's add that here. Central nervous system and we'll just abbreviate this for future use as the CNS. Everything that occurs outside of the CNS, which we'll highlight here in yellow, in the rest of the body, or in the periphery, we'll call the peripheral nervous system, or the PNS for short. So we'll add that right here. The peripheral nervous system. And again, We'll just abbreviate that, PNS. As it turns out, this division is really useful because it not only divides the nervous system by location, but by function. The PNS transmits information going in and going out, while the CNS is mainly responsible for processing and responding to the information. Now, because the PNS does these two things, carrying signals going both in and going out, we can make a further division. So we'll divide the PNS into two categories, signals going in and signals going out. The first is the sensory or afferent component, which I'll label here with an A and add right here. So afferents or sensory. And this side of the PNS brings information into the brain. Once the signal has been processed by the CNS, we have a signal that goes out by the efferent or motor component efferent motor. So we have the CNS, the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. And the PNS has two components, the afferent sensory side, which brings information in, and the efferent or motor side, which sends information out. This efferent motor response, though, is still pretty broad, because what does it really mean to have a signal go out? It turns out there are two types of signals that the brain sends out. They're ones that we can consciously control, like moving our quadriceps muscle in our legs or our biceps muscle in our arms, which we'll highlight here in orange, and things we can't really control, like 
changing our heart rate, which I've highlighted here in red. So this is the further division of the efferent or motor side of the nervous system. We have the somatic nervous system, which I'll add here under efferent, which is our voluntary control, skeletal muscle, and we have the autonomic nervous system, or ANS for short. And the ANS really controls the things that aren't under our conscious control. Things that we don't have to think about, but that kind of just happen. So changes in heart rate, blood pressure, rates of digestion, the dilation of your pupils, and lots of other things fall into this category. We can also call the somatic side the SNS, which I'll put here for short. Now these ANS, or autonomic nervous system controlled functions, can operate in two directions. You can either speed up, or you can slow down the heart rate. You can dilate, or you can constrict your pupils, etc. So because the ANS operates in two directions, it's split into two categories. The first of these is called the sympathetic nervous system, or the sympathetic side of the autonomic nervous system. And it is responsible for speeding everything up, or making everything in the body go faster. And the way I like to remember that is both sympathetic and speed both start with S. On the other side of sympathetic is the parasympathetic, which, as you might have guessed, slows everything down. Para sympathetic. You can think of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic sides as the gas and brake pedals in a car. To speed up the car, you press the gas. To speed up the body in times of stress, the brain uses the sympathetic nervous system. To slow down a car, you press on the brake. And to slow down the body when there's no stress, your brain uses the parasympathetic nervous system. So we'll add this is the brake and the sympathetic is the gas. These sympathetic and parasympathetic systems work against each other, and it's the balance of the two that allow our bodies to speed up or slow down depending on the conditions in the environment. This setup is called antagonistic control. An easy way to remember what each of these systems does is this. The sympathetic governs what might happen in a stressful situation, so all S's. Sympathetic, speed, stressful. And this is the so-called fight or flight response that you may have heard of before fight versus flight. Your heart rate goes up, pupils dilate, the adrenaline's pumping. This is what happens when a stressful situation happens. On the other hand, when there's no stressful situation, the parasympathetic nervous system can activate and slow everything down. So if you're looking for a rhyme, this is the rest and digest side of the nervous system. Our heart rate is low, digestion can proceed as normal, and we don't have to be so ramped up because there's no stress in the environment. So we've got the different branches of the nervous system written here on the screen, and we know what each of them do and what their function is, but let's go ahead and put this together with an example. So imagine you're at your desk, minding your own business, watching this video, when you can see outside your window gathering clouds. And you don't really pay it much attention, until, when you're not really expecting it, you hear the boom and the crash of a giant wave of thunder. Now, I don't know about you, but this would definitely activate my sympathetic nervous system. My heart rate would go up, my adrenaline would start to flow, my pupils would dilate, and I would generally feel a feeling of excitement, maybe a little bit scared, but it's definitely something that would be stressful. So, remember, S goes with S. Our sympathetic nervous system would be activated in times of stress. So we can see how one particular event in the environment, in this case a wave of thunder, can activate a specific branch of the nervous system, in this case the sympathetic branch, and produce specific effects in the body, in this case increased heart rate, dilation of pupils, and the flowing of adrenaline. This is the role of the nervous system, to take in the information in the environment and allow our bodies to respond to it in a way that prepares us to be best equipped for whatever situation we might encounter. So now that we've got our organization of the nervous system down, in the next video we're going to take a closer look at the physical pieces that make up the nervous system, the nerves, and we'll discover how they work to send signals throughout the body.